Hey, what's up? Hope you're doing good. In this video, we are going to talk about React interview questions. So I'm actually planning to make a series of these videos um, also with other people in which you can participate as well, but more on that at the end of this video. So before we start, questions should obviously depend on the job role, right? Whether you're going to be a front end developer or a back end developer. You know that there are always differences in the amount of react you will be working with maybe it's like your well your full-time thing right your core technology but maybe it's just something you do on the side along with a lot of other technologies and of course experience level is a major difference because obviously i would ask different questions to someone that's applying for a junior position versus a senior position Right, I would expect that senior developer to have much more in-depth knowledge about React, but also front-end development in general. And I would also expect them to be more independent, have a good idea about the pros and cons between choosing for certain tools or technologies, and just have a better approach to decision-making when it comes down to creating enterprise-level applications. And very likely that senior dev will also need to explain certain things to less experienced staff, juniors and media. So I would also expect probably that they can at least um, show how things are done. And now for a junior dev, it, it would be a different case, right? I would want them to have a you know, good foundation in React and have the, or at least give me the confidence that they will be part of supporting the team with simply you know picking up tickets and essentially pushing code. That's something I would uh, find most important in a junior developer. But of course, it will also depend on the project type and just general work they do. Because if I would have a position for a React developer that's specialized in, for example, data visualization, then of course, in the interview question, I would go, go more in depth about that as well as for like a, well, just a regular React job without any specialization in these kind of areas, I wouldn't ask any questions about data visualization at all. Having that said, keep an eye out for new videos. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell because I will be doing more videos where I will interview someone else uh, based on their experience level. So junior, meteor, senior, something like that. So the questions that we will now go into is what I would consider very foundational React knowledge. So regardless of your experience level, these are things you should just really know. So question one, what are the two hooks you use most often? Now this obviously is a subjective question because it might differ from person to person. However, I would really expect someone to name two hooks right here. Use state and use effect. Those are the two hooks you will most likely use most often, right? There's many other hooks as well, but you usually use them less frequent. But if you're working as a React developer, especially those two hooks, you will use them every single day. All right, next question. Let's imagine I have two components where component A is the parent of component B. How can I let component B know about state that lives in component A? So the answer right here is pretty simple, props, right? Of course there are many different ways to share um, state between components, right? There's like, you know, just, well, like I said before, props, uh, but you can also use things like, like context and, and state management libraries. But especially if someone would ask me a question like this without a lot of context, right? Props should be your default approach to passing down state uh, between your components. The third question is why would someone use the use effect hook? So back in the days when React hooks were not a thing yet, so when you were using class um, based components, you had so called component lifecycle methods and use effect is you could say an alternative to these lifecycle methods since you cannot use them anymore in non class based components. And um, the first uh, lifecycle method is component did mount. The second one is component did update. And the third lifecycle method is component should unmount. Now, I would not necessarily expect from someone that they um, know that, well, use effect is somewhat related to these lifecycle methods. I would much rather have them explain to me why someone would use a use effect hook. So with use effect, you're essentially 
able to execute a function, a piece of logic, when, well, based on a certain condition. And in a lot of cases, you want to execute a certain uh, piece of logic directly after the component mount. So that's the component did mount part. So directly as the um, component renders initially, you want to check for something, right? You want to, for example, fetch data, which is a very, very common use case. Um, but sometimes you also want to have a sort of listener to certain you know, state changes, for example, right? So if something in the state has changed, you want to fire another function. So that would be where uh, you can also use a use effect hook, which is kind of like the alternative to component uh, did update. And for the last use case, component will unmount. Um, let's say the use cases are, well, limited right there, but something I have come across quite often is that whenever you um, create an event listener in your use effect uh, hook, then you also want to remove that event listener whenever the component will unmount. So that's um, a case where you could use that as well. Next question, if you need to set up a fully client-side rendered SPA with React, what tool chain would you use? So with this question, I would not necessarily ever want to understand what a tool chain is, because a lot of people are actually using tool chains, but they might not be even be aware that, that well, the term for that is a tool chain. So, but this is a great question to see if someone is bullshitting me, because if they don't know what an SPA or a tool chain is, you know, then just tell me in the interview and, and, and don't just give a random question. But the right answer here is create React app. So of course there are other tool chains as well. Think about Next.js or Gatsby and there are many others, but especially the fact that it's fully client-side rendered, fully client-side rendered single page application, you know, in those cases, create React app should be your default go-to tool chain. Next question, why would someone use React? So this is, of course, a very subjective question, right? There's not necessarily an answer good or wrong here. But it would at least show me that someone has taken the time to actually think about, you know, why is React actually a thing? You know, why are you working uh, with React in especially front-end development so much? So, you know, I, I will get into some things I, I would probably say. So I would say, well, React is pretty fast it almost provides like these native user like experiences because it allows you to render and re-render parts of the screen very quickly so in that way it feels very fast another great thing about react is that it allows you to build stuff pretty quickly right react has been around for years and you don't have to reinvent the wheel yourself when building single page applications and besides that it also has a very good ecosystem you probably know it you know there are many good react libraries out there that you can use they're they're up for grabs and that's definitely something that makes it very powerful because coming back to like reinventing the wheel you don't have to do that anymore so there's a lot of resources you can use to get things built relatively quickly all right next one let's imagine you want to redirect a user to another page on a button click how would you go over implementing this so also here not necessarily one answer is the right one but i would say well probably in your react project you have something like react router dom for your routing so in a case like well if a user clicks on a button and needs to be redirected i would most likely use the link component from react router dom or if that is not possible for some reason i could use the navigate hook from react router dom to push the router to uh, sorry the user to another page so the next question which array methods do you tend to use most often so what i like about this question is that it is not necessarily related to react but more covers some some you know general javascript knowledge and if they're not able to list at least a few array methods um i would highly have my doubts whether they have been working on you know really big or more enterprise level type of applications um so well i would say well some array methods i use quite often uh, are map filter uh, for each uh let's see find some every includes pop push i mean the list goes on and on there are, of course many array methods um but at least you know you should be able to list 
a couple of methods um, and of course know what they do. The last question, what comes to your mind if you're using dot map to render something within your JSX? And I say the word index. So this question might be a little vague, but honestly, if I tell you dot map and um, the word index, then something that immediately comes to my mind in React is using keys. So if you're, for example, mapping over an array of objects um, in your JSX and returning an element right there, then it is important to pass a key property to those elements. And that's in order for React to know which um, element is bound to which object. And this especially becomes important if you're adding or removing things, for example, from that array. Now, if you'd like to know more about that, I recommend you to check out my free full React course right here on YouTube, um, in which I will also get into why using that map is important. So in terms of questions, I think I'll leave it here. Of course, we didn't go through a lot of questions, but like I said before, I'm planning to make a pretty large series on, um, well, related to this, to React interview questions and um, also based on experience level. So we'll also get uh, to some more advanced questions as well right there. So I plan to make these videos with other developers uh, like you. And um, well, session will essentially be me asking some questions uh, just like these uh, and also a live coding part where um, we will try to solve a problem with React. So if you'd like to get featured in one of those videos, please get in touch with me. Um, the only thing is important that as soon as you jump into a call with me, people are able to see and hear you. You can do so by hitting me up on Discord or send me an email to interview at techbase.dev. Uh, and please tell a little bit about yourself, like the experiences you have with React and well, on what level you think you're on. So junior, meteor senior so i look forward to those videos and having that said um, if you like this video and like to see more of this type of content please subscribe uh, and give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions please let me know down in the comments thanks for watching